Hi everybody, in this video, uh, a couple videos here, I want to go over a little bit of uh, math and st uh, statistics review, uh, just to give you a little refresher um, in case you need to come back at any point during the course to reference this. Um, so what we're going to start with is looking at some of the summation notation and descriptive statistics. Uh, it's written above, but I'm going to go ahead and write it again. Summation notation. And using uh, summation notation to talk about the descriptive statistics, uh, particularly the mean and the standard deviation. Um, I'm not really going to talk a lot about the median, but if you have uh, you know, a set of data, the median is exactly the middle piece of data, the, that 50th percentile. Um, I recommend going and checking out the um, appendices in um, the Woldridge Econometrics textbook. They have a lot of uh, extra details here and some more examples, um, more than what I'm just showing you here. So let's start with the summation notation. And that's going to be using the Greek letter sigma, capital sigma. And so the way that this is going to work is we're going to have a se uh, series of data. So let's let xi represent a sequence where i is equal to 1 through n. Uh, denote a sequence of numbers there are n of these numbers okay and we can write the sum of all of these numbers as the following. And these numbers, they don't have to be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to n. These are just n different numbers, um, and they're indexed with those, uh, with those indices there. So uh, we can write the sum of all these as starting from the first one in the index all the way to the nth number, the last one, x sub i is just equal to uh, that first one, the first number, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4, all the way up to xn. Okay, um, and again, these could be any numbers. We'll, we'll, go, we'll do a couple examples here in a, in a second. A few properties. of the summation operator so first for any constant which will denote as C so this is just any any number at all um, if we have the summation from 1 through n of just a constant, that means we're only going to be adding up c uh, 1 time, 2, 3, 4, all n times. So ultimately it's just going to be n times c. Okay, and for an example, suppose that xi contains the numbers 2, 4, and 6. Okay, in this case, um, for example, if c is equal to 2 and n is 
we have three numbers, so n is equal to 3. The summation of 1 through n of c is just 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6. Um, we didn't use any of our xi numbers, we just summed the constant number 2. Now let's add the xi numbers in there and our second property for any constant c <clears throat> we have the following property. If we sum cxi we can actually factor out the c and just sum all the x's. So using our same example and our same numbers, 2, 4, 6, the summation then goes from 1 to 3, because n is 3, we have three numbers, cxi, and we can actually go ahead and replace c with 2xi. So 1, we could just do, do our new property, 2 times i is equal to 1 through 3xi. That's equal to 2 times our numbers were 2, 4, 6. So we have 2 plus 4 plus 6. That's equal to 12 times 2 is 24. But you can see that that is equal if we didn't factor that out. What we're going to have is we're going to have 2 times the first number, which is 2, plus 2 times the second number, which is 4, plus 2 times the next number, which is 6. And that also adds up to 24. 4 plus 8 plus 12. Okay, so uh, it's ultimately just factoring, uh, factoring a common, um, uh, factoring a common number. Okay, um, so that's our second one. Let me actually circle these in red. Okay, and then finally, one more property to add. Three. So now we're going to have pairs of numbers, xi and yi. All indexed as before. So there are n of both of those. Our pairs of numbers and a and b are constant. What we can write here is the following. <clears throat> so just as before, um, not only can we factor out common numbers, we can also distribute the summation operator so that we have a summation of x. Actually, another way you can sometimes write this, which I'll do right now, is summing over all of the i's. So we're just basically assuming that this goes from i1 through n. So xi plus b times the summation of all the yi's. Okay, um, and so there we have a distributive property from a summation notation. Um, but this only works for addition because it is a summation property. But don't let something like this fool you into thinking you can do the following. So this is not equal 
do the summation of all the x's divided by the summation of all the y's. Okay, um, just to show you why, uh, why that's not true, so if xi contains the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and yi contains the numbers 3, 4, and 5, if we sum x over y, that's going to be one third plus two fourths. So we're just taking, oh, these need i's here. So we're taking the first number from each, the second number of each, and the third number from each, and adding them together through the summation. <clears throat> that is not going to be equal to the summation of x oops, over the summation of y. Because that would be all the sum of x is 1 plus 2 plus 3, and all the sum of y is 3 plus 4 plus 5. Okay, and so um, here, you know, you'd have to get the common factors and, and multiply those all together. Um, this one, and those are not, those are not going to be not going to be equal to each other. Okay, not equal. All right, so that's generally how summation works. Um, what I think I'll do is actually just pause the video and then talk about how we can apply these ideas to summary statistics, mean, and standard deviation. So I'll see you guys in the next video.